It's Sunday, December 18th, 2022. This is All About Your Benjamins and your weekly mixtape and weekend review video. Hope you had a great week coming at you later because we were busy watching the World Cup game, which ended. Exciting game. Uh, so that's what I want to start off with. It was an amazing game between Argentina and France. We were rooting for Argentina. Leo's favorite t- uh, player is Lionel Messi. Has always been his favorite player, so it was cool to see him get it. Also very cool to see Kylian Mbappe live up to all the hype that he had from the last World Cup and then over the last few years of his great uh, professional career with PSG. So got to see the GOAT, and I do think it was a passing of the baton to Kylian Mbappe, and he lived up to having the hat trick and scoring some big goals to send it over to overtime and then to PKs. So if you did not see that, be sure either tonight or tomorrow morning to check the highlights and pay a little more attention to football. Uh, because it's a sport that I've grown to love. Now, let's get to the headlines that may or may not be impacting your financial plan and portfolio. And you can see down below if you're watching this on the blog, there's a few headlines. Um, Nothing really new, but some things to hit on real quick. So first and foremost, it was a Fed week last week and the Federal Reserve raised interest rates by another 0.5%. 50 basis points, you may have may hear that, half a percentage point. Uh, So that was the low, they've lowered it. Um, I guess let's say, take that back. They raised it at a lower rate this time. So they've been doing 0.75%, and this was a a reduction, but still increased it by 0.5%. The language coming out of the Fed was they were uh, planning on continuing to raise rates even through the spring. So the market had been hoping that with inflation looking like it's coming down, as we're going to see here in a second, it has some. But that with that happening, that maybe the Fed would pump the brakes some on raising interest rates. Some of the language did say, though, that when they continue to raise in the upcoming uh, meetings and months when they do it, it might be by lower rates depending on what inflation is saying. But nonetheless, uh, they're not happy with the progress that's been made so far. So they are continuing to raise interest rates and trying to get that inflation mark back down to 2%. Uh, Some commentary out there about whether or not the Fed can get it back to 2%. Should 2% be our metric going forward? Should they change the numbers? Uh, So there's going to be a lot of this commentary out there. We'll see what happens as time goes on. I mentioned inflation is improving. Um, So year over year from November to November, uh, CPI went up by 7.1%, which was considered a victory. It was 7.6 October to October. So it went down by a little bit over a half a percent, showing that the prices are coming down, that some of the work that the Fed is doing is working. Um, demand is starting to slow a little bit as people are unfortunately lay, being laid off, losing jobs, or preparing for the upcoming official recession. We've talked about before, the old definition of recession was negative quarters of GDP, back-to-back quarters. We've had that, but we haven't had the unemployment the Fed is looking for, so um, they are saying we're not in a recession yet. Everybody's expecting it. So um, that is a positive. I saw a pretty funny meme uh, that showed... Uh, two people on a bus, one looking out at an optimistic side, one looking at a negative side. And it was uh, looking at the negative side was inflation at 7.1 percent, you know, a year ago or earlier this year when it started to ramp up, how that bad that was. And now in November, 7.1 percent inflation, it's a positive thing and how it's still the same rate, just coming from different perspectives, different parts of the journey. It looks a little differently. I thought it was pretty funny. All right. Now, what does this all do to the market? Uh, While I don't love to make reactions to -to week-to-week, day-to-day, month-to-month market movements, it's still part of what people look at. Still something we should address here on All About Your Benjamins. So the market uh, did not end the week on a high note. We had been going through a little bit of a nice run, maybe hoping that uh, we were going to get a Santa Claus rally. It looks like Wall Street is getting cold this year uh, for Christmas and that we had the market sell off pretty pretty significantly uh, a couple days this week. Um, So that is all, you know, spill out from the Fed, raising rates and talking about continuing to raise rates. So now the market is trying, investors are trying to price in. We have higher rates for longer. What does that mean? Um, Seeing demand slowing down. What does that mean to the economy? Uh, So that is part of the reasons that are being uh, floated around as to why the market behaved the way it did this week. But it was not the best of weeks and it did not make us look too optimistic for a Santa Claus rally. Although, who knows, maybe this week will be good um, for Christmas, and then the week between Christmas and New Year's, uh, it'll just be okay. So maybe we still get a little bit of a rally, but it wasn't one that I think a lot of us were hoping for. I mentioned this a couple weeks back. Uh, this Friday is the deadline for Congress to pass a bill to keep the government in business. They can pass the bigger bill, which will do it for longer term. They may pass some shorter stuff to keep some areas of the government open. Uh, In my career, this is uh, probably the sixth or seventh time that I can remember 
uh, maybe it's not that high, but it seems like it has been, uh, that we've been going through this. I remember the first time in my career hearing it, I was really nervous and didn't know what I was going to expect, but it just ended up being um, a regular, it really was just a headline for everybody else. The people who work in the government agencies that were impacted obviously felt it, but the rest of us, our lives kind of went on. So this is a headline that could have impact on the market in the short term, uh, but most likely won't impact anything long term. And finally, as we round up this week's mixed, uh, mixtape and week in review, uh, Sam Bankman freed the CEO founder or former CEO and founder of FTX was arrested in the Bahamas, was charged with fraud and conspiracy and wire fraud and all these things that he should have been charged with. And the latest headline I saw is he's going to be uh, surrendering himself to come back to the U.S. So it looks like there's finally going to be some justice uh, for this spill out. And I think that a lot of us watching this and our frustrations may have overreacted, underestimating how long it takes to get some of these things uh, moving quickly, especially when we compared it to Bernie Madoff. Bernie Madoff, you know, the day it was found out he was running a Ponzi scheme, he was arrested. Um, and one of the things I heard was that he told his kids that he was running a Ponzi scheme and they called the police versus it being found out by the other side, uh, by the, by the um, authorities. So not apples to apples there, uh, but it looks like there's going to be um, some consequences finally for the behavior of uh, Bankman Freed the team at FTX um, basically embezzling and, and you know, fraudulently using uh, consumer funds. One thing I want to point on this, I think I touched on it before, but just you know, this is a case of fraud that happened to happen in the cryptocurrency space, uh, the crypto asset space. I am a believer in the space. Um, I am an investor personally in it. I have some clients that have invested in it. Um, I do think that it does solve a lot of problems that we have. I've never been a to the moon type of person. Bitcoin solves everything. But I do think the technology, I think the uh, digital asset side of it is very valuable. I think it impacts a lot of people uh, that uh, don't have the access to finances that we may have. Think of this as a global currency, not just what it means here in the U.S. So um, I'm glad to see that there are consequences coming for the people at FTX. But I also want people to realize that this is straight up fraud that can happen anywhere. So it is not a crypto thing. It was fraud that happened to happen in crypto. And if you look into the technology and the beauty of what it is, that the true way of using crypto and decentralization would have made this a little bit harder to have happened. So um, you don't have to love the space. You don't have to invest in the space. But don't write it off because of this, because there's been plenty of fraud in traditional finance um, and probably a lot of fraud that happened that just happened to make its way through and cover itself up that we never knew about. So um, again, this is not a, a crypto only story. This is just fraud and fraud happens everywhere. Um, so with that, I will end this week's Week in Review. I want to thank you for tuning in um, and I want to wish you a great week and I should have a mixtape next week, but we'll see what happens with the holidays and Christmas break with the boys and if there's anything worth reporting on. So with that, have a great day. Thanks as always for tuning in and we'll see you all in the next episode. 